maybe I am a monster. What's up everybody, it's Zach. Welcome to another teardown here in my workshop. Tonight we've got the A6 Gel Resolution 8 teardown, and I for one cannot wait to uncover all the tech these shoes have in them. I've been playing with them for about two weeks, and I've finished with them on clay. Now there is a clay version of these shoes, however I found that as long as the clay quartz were well maintained, these did just fine. So we're going to cut one in half, and then we're going to dissect the others to see how all these innovations combine together to make this one of the most technically advanced shoes I have ever seen. Where does this piece go? And heads up, pretty soon we've got the teardown of the Nike Air Zoom GP Turbos. So if you want to see that video when it comes out, click the subscribe button and notification bell. As always, let's start here with the heel counter. Much different this time than last week when I was cutting open the Vapor Cage 4s. This heel counter was stiff and solid, as well as this extra plastic trussic system on the outside made for almost a double layer heel counter. As you can see here, me trying to pry it open, I actually needed to get out my saw just to get through it. And this is just going to give you an unbelievable amount of stability in the heel. Here we see the insole being cut open, the removal insole, nothing special. Coming through the tongue of the shoe, even the tongue, the knit of the tongue was really durable to my knife. Shoelaces, nothing really that special until we get to the shoelace garage, which now that I cut open all the laces, you can see as the laces pull, these two tabs then pull on the inside and outside of the shoe creating this gauntlet for your feet. And these were pretty tough to my knife, as you can see, just really trying to put some force to get them open. So those are durable to slide in. The upper was very durable to my knife, about three layers. Insole was standard, but what wasn't standard was the amount of foam you get in the midfoot and forefoot of the shoe, giving you so much cushion and support. And more on those blue cushion tabs later in the heel. Now starting the dissection of the upper, we're going to notice that it was very difficult to get off the midsole and the insole of the shoe. There was a lot of interconnections in this shoe from the upper synthetic material to the trussic system to the Dyna bar. Just a really well put together upper that resisted my knife at every turn. Now we're gonna get a really good look at this shoelace garage here with these orange pull tabs. Now, as you'll notice, they're interconnected to the shoelaces. So when you pull the shoelace, it pulls the tab, and then it pulls onto that triangular piece, which is sewn into the midsole, as well as on the inside of the shoe. Now, if you'll notice on the inside, that piece is solid, and on the outside, it is mesh. That's because the inside needs more stability for your arch, and the outside needs to move more for comfort. As you can see here, looking up the heel counter, nothing out of the ordinary, but a nice bit of padding up there. And here you can see where we have this two layer heel counter with the heel counter and the trussic system, giving you just unmatched uh, stability. And here we go, glued upper as well, but what you'll notice is some modified stitching in the back and that shoelace garage, as well as the shoelace eyelets go through all layers, therefore giving you a lot of stability in the upper. Here we have our durability test, and you'll see barely even a dent using the highest grit sandpaper. It's outstanding durability. Here we have a great look at the midsole, outsole, at the trussic system, and Dyna bar, and it really shows you how those all kind of come together to cradle your foot. And another look here at that double layer heel counter. Just great construction. Now, I want to look at that heel padding system, so I'm going to go right where the Dyna bar and that trussic system meet and right in front of that heel cushioning system. That way I can dissect right through it. I kind of want to see how these all work together with that foam. Now, when I cut it through, I also didn't notice a shank, so I also want to see if there's a shank in this shoe hiding. And as you can see, just a nice bit of foam, pretty resistant, a lot of memory but no shank. So let's dissect out that heel cushion. And as you can see, it's hiding right under here in this tab in the heel. Now the interesting part of this cushion system is how elastic it is. This thing is like a, a spring, which is really nice because it's not going to deform as easily as some other materials because it has that memory it wants to snap back. 
So when you keep bouncing up and down on it, it's gonna continue to give you a lot of memory. Now looking here in the heel, look how far in that trussic system comes in. It really cradles the heel. And then looking at the Dyna bar on the outside, this is the outside of the shoe, you see how it even comes in on the shoe a little bit. And here you see the spring back of that Dyna bar giving you a lot of responsiveness and resiliency when on the outside of your foot trying to cut back in to get a ball. So here you can see the outside and the inside of the shoe working together, the solid inside to hold your arch up and that resilient Dyna bar to help give you some push off force moving the other direction. Now you can see no shank, but a good bit of foam in the mid part of the shoe. And here's where I was really blown away. Our durability test revealed not even a millimeter of damage to that outsole, which blew away the Adidas Stycon and the Nike Vapor Cage 4s, which I thought had really durable outsoles, but this one was better. All right, well, I'm a believer. These shoes are hands down the most innovative shoes that I have ever put on. From the upper system to this shoelace garage to the unbelievable lack of a shank, but having the Dyna wall and then that midfoot trussic system, almost like a built-in orthotic in the shoe. There are so many pieces of tech to really geek out on on this shoe. And not only does it have all this innovation, but it's comfortable. I mean, if you watched my first video with the play test and performance review, you saw that they broke in right away, pretty comfortable right out of the box. The only problem I had was my right foot, which was my smaller foot, just slightly coming out of the shoe. However, once I broke them in, they were fine. And even that day, if I just put on a second pair of socks or a thicker pair of socks, like the Thor Low Level 3s, I didn't have any problems there either. I did, however, switch my eyelet from the back to the front again once I broke the shoe in and once I wasn't coming out of the heel. So that was a little something that I did go to because that was getting a little annoying. But other than that, that's about all the complaints I have. I'd like to see how these would do with a polypropylene shank in them over time. I think in the short run, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to give you a more plush feel. But maybe if you're keeping these shoes for a while, having a little bit of polypropylene in there may help you with some durability over time. But once again, it's really hard to fault these shoes for much. Reminder, if there's any shoe that you would like to see me tear down, just leave a comment down below. I read all of them and I'd love to hear your thoughts on what shoes we need to see the inside of. All right, everybody, until the next teardown, hope you have a great day, great night, wherever you're tuning in from. I'll see you next time.